Uh, we're going to take a look at the car industry now because the latest figures from the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders for June show that 3,539 new cars were sold last month. So that means in Northern Ireland after June 2020 that last month represented the worst June for new car sales since that organisation began compiling data for Northern Ireland. A similar story in the rest of the UK, but last month the worst June for sales since 1996. Ongoing shortages of key components and pandemic restrictions in China are slowing down new vehicle production. As a result, supplier delivery times of new cars remain abnormally long. Robert Forrester, CEO of Virtu Motors, which operates 160 car dealerships across the UK, can shine a bit more light on this for us. We're seeing that new car registrations are down. Is that reflected in your order books or is it a case of people are just waiting so long to get their cars that they haven't been registered yet? Um. Hi, we, we've got record order banks and I think the rest of the industry has got record order banks. So people are, are waiting much longer than normal in terms of getting their new cars delivered. And, and this is about production difficulties. You, were, you mentioned about lockdown difficulties, uh, China lockdown, but the whole global supply chains are in a bit of a mess, to be honest with you, and components are in short supply, particularly semiconductors. And then it's the semiconductors. That we Ukraine as well. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the semiconductors really are one of the main issues because it's, it's used in car production now, uh, in every car basically. Just tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, semiconductors is probably one of the biggest factors, but not the only factor. The Ukraine war actually created another load of issues. But uh, modern cars, you know, with autom autom autonomous driving capability, connected vehicles, and are now connected, you know, to contact centers automatically they're measuring everything electric vehicles have significantly more semiconductors in than than petrol or diesel cars so the number of semiconductors in a car is going up and there's been a massive shortage globally of all semiconductors so they've really had to constrain supply um, but it isn't all just about semiconductors i mean ukraine made a lot of wiring harness looms um, and obviously the war has massively dissipated that market so they've been hit by all manner of things actually in the last 12 months and, and this is the culmination it's a production issue not a consumer issue so robert say uh, things get really tight at virtu motors and they decide to throw you out to sell cars again and i walk <laughs> into the showroom and i say robert i tell you what it is i'm thinking of changing the car how long are we going to have to wait what, what's what's the general ballpark answer that you're giving people these days uh well it very much depends on the model so there is not a general ballpark answer uh but i would say on average we're looking at three months probably uh if you're looking at some specific vehicles you could be looking at 18 months really uh, 18 months, months for a new car you could absolutely could be now it'd be a very specific luxury vehicle probably to that level but certainly we've had uh, you know does it put, pe does it put people off cars. robert whenever you're talking in months to say to them yeah that's great you're going well, to get your new car you're going to have to wait six months for it you would think so wouldn't you but really we, we we've got record order banks so people are placing the orders and leaving us with a deposit yeah and so, uh, so i don't think it has much of an impact and the cars are so good these days you know in terms of you know the brand new electric vehicles with large range you've got fantastic technology and information systems i mean you know, Robert, you're not, re you're, you're not really screens. having to sell me a car, Robert. Honestly, you don't have to tell me all these things. <laughs> Here, tell, but before you go as well, so say the car's playing up and I'm going to leave it in for a service. Yeah. What, what, what kind of problems is it throwing up in terms of getting parts from uh, all arts and parts around the world? A, a regular service isn't a problem. You shouldn't have a problem with a regular service. But if something goes wrong and you're unfortunate enough to require a part that's on the list of parts that are on what we would call back order, uh, you could be waiting a long time. Is that a long, is that a long list, there. Robert? It's a fairly long list. Oh, I've dear. been in the industry 22 years and I've never seen parts delays like we've seen in the last six months. Right. So that's more good news. Well, Robert, at least you've left us with a positive note there, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully things will all work out and, and things will improve soon. But if you're on that lengthy list of people waiting for a car or for a part, it looks as if um, things aren't going to change anytime soon. Robert Forrester there, CEO of Virtue Motors.